Welcome to Scrapple TV. From the moment this email traffic became discoverable, from the moment that I announced that Jeff Moulton's investigation into Jerry Sandusky's investigation had the technology in hand to track down every email in the Corbett Attorney General's office, some involved in this filthy email train, chain have tried desperately to ensure that these emails and more importantly, the attachment, their attachment to it, never saw the light of day. Today we continue our coverage of Porngate, the too narrowly named scandal, and also the protracted legal battle unfolding between embattled PA Attorney General Kathleen Kane and her political opponents. We do so by giving the light of day to a couple of the more disturbing emails associated with Porngate, and we focus on the network of senders and recipients that include state judges, U.S. attorneys, high-ranking officials and others in Pennsylvania's debauched Dauphin County. Welcome to Collateral. We previously reported on an offensive video sent to PA Supreme Court Justice J. Michael Aiken, authored by a YouTube character named The Amazing Racist. Another was entitled John Hickley, and contained a painfully unfunny Republican effort at making a joke. The joke revolves around a hoax letter sent by Nancy Reagan to her husband's assailant in jail, centered on the speculation that he, Hinckley, might soon be released. We're reminded in the email that Hinckley was obsessed with Jodie Foster to the point that to make himself well known to her, uh, he attempted to assassinate President Reagan. So in the hoax letter, Mrs. Reagan tells Hinckley that she forgives him and bears him no ill will. Then in the letter's postscript, we get the unforgettable punchline. P.S. While you have been incarcerated, Barack Obama has been banging Jodie Foster like a screen door in a tornado. You might want to look into that. What the hell was that to send around to judges and attorneys? I mean, was that funny? Maybe it's funny. Maybe it's funny to joke about manipulating a mentally ill would-be murder into killing a Kenyan Muslim socialist Negro president. I mean, it's funny if you're a certain brand of Republican. And remember, the email was sent by a Dauphin County criminal defense attorney to dozens of people who must really love a good joke, you know? They include three assistant U.S. attorneys in Pennsylvania's Middle District, William Behe, Mike Consiglio, and Daryl Bloom. They also include three common pleas court judges, Ed Marisco, Ebert Merle, and Bruce Bratton. Another recipient was chief clerk for Supreme Court Justice Chuck Voss. Chief Public Defender Bradley Winnick and Chief Deputy Public Defender Greg Mills were also on the email chain. So in what sort of world does a private attorney feel it's within the bounds of proper professional conduct to circulate a joke email to a bunch of white public officials in which the desire to see President Obama shot is expressed? Is this legal judicial milieu in Dauphin County so bereft of professionalism that this sort of stuff is commonplace? In another email titled Prom Night in Camden, which is sent by the same Dauphin County lawyer and which should live in well-deserved infamy, recipients are presented with a vile, running, racist commentary because, I guess, if you're a Dauphin County judge or U.S. attorney, court clerk or public defender, it's pretty darn funny. Notice, too, the sentiment that the police and ambulance vehicles on hand are uh, there for community support, the suggestion being, of course you would have police and ambulances anywhere you had uh, a black person event, right? Because, of course, violence could break out at any second. Bloom, Bratton, Marisco, and Winnick were all on the prom night chain, too, as was Deputy Clerk for Federal Court Judge John Jones, Liz O'Donnell. And so was Anne Marie Kaiser. Kaiser was Tom Corbett's chief of staff for a spell when he was PA Attorney General, and she was acting as his Secretary of Legal Affairs at the time she received this email. This is the same Tom Corbett who professed complete ignorance that this was going on when he was AG. There are plenty of other emails too. But just think about this for a second. Seeing these depictions, how can plaintiffs and defendants of minority backgrounds feel confident they'll get a fair hearing in Dauphin County? How can they not wonder if they're being treated fairly by these individuals and the institutions they represent. And think about this too. How many other Republican-dominated attorneys general offices around the country have similar professional environments? Does anybody really think it's none? 
The scandalous behavior associated with Porngate is likely wider than has so far been reported. Kane's representatives have hinted for some time that there's a wider dimensions to the corruption of certain of Porngate's main players. And we'll stay with this story as it continues to unfold.